Deep sea scientific research is an unpredictable undertaking. You plan everything out so carefully and for so long, but you just never know how it's all going to turn out. The last two weeks on board the Joydus Resolution have been intense, filled with highs and lows. Our first operations of this expedition involved recovering an old cork seafloor observatory and assembling and installing a new one. Scientists, engineers, and operations staff were hopeful as we successfully latched onto the cork, which had been taking measurements deep below the seafloor for the past 14 years. Everyone was excited when the cork was finally raised onto the deck. We successfully recovered the data logger, which records the information, and a string of 10 thermistors, which record temperature. Co-Chief Scientist Dr. Katrina Edwards from the University of Southern California and her team of microbiologists took samples from the cork and the instrument string that had been hanging undisturbed down in the ocean crust, looking for signs of microbes that live down in the deep biosphere. Scientists are eager to learn what kind of life exists down there and what their role is in their environment. Everyone seemed giddy to see this old, rusty piece of equipment safely laid to rest on the deck of the ship, but soon they turned their attention to our next project. Dr. Keir Becker is a hydrogeologist from the Rosensteel School of Marine and Atmospheric Science in Florida who's been involved with this observatory from the beginning. He was thrilled to recover some expensive sampling equipment he last saw when he helped deploy the cork in 1997. He's now working on assembling equipment and sensors for the new Cork Observatory. Work began immediately on the new observatory that will be placed in the hole to take measurements and samples for the next five years or more. More than 500 meters of steel and fiberglass casing needed to be prepared and assembled, reaching down into the waters below the ship. Hundreds of meters of umbilical tubing needed to be carefully connected so samples could be taken from the wellhead which sits on the sea floor. It was a massive team effort requiring the cooperation of scientists, operations staff, engineers, ship's crew, and the group that works on the drill floor to move all the pieces into place, connect them together, and safely lower them down into the sea. Hundreds of man hours went into the process of assembling the casing and the wellhead, the part that holds all the instruments that the scientists deploy. When assembled, the cork will reach more than 530 meters down into the seafloor. A suite of new instruments were put together and lowered into the casing. These instruments included osmo samplers, which are designed to use an osmotic pump to take continuous water samples over long periods of time. Hundreds of thousands of dollars and countless hours went into designing, building, and assembling this new cork observatory which would give us a new window into the processes that shape our planet. Osmo samplers are long tubes that contain a salt-based osmotic pump and coils of either Teflon or copper tubing to collect the water samples over the next five years. Scientists gathered together and watched in anticipation as the bottom of the cork was successfully guided through the re-entry cone and into the existing hole. Everything had gone great and all that was left was to detach the running tool from the cork so we could bring the drill string back up to the surface. Sadly, this is where the unpredictability of scientific research took over. DP, this is Jake. After noticing a loss of weight on the drill string, Everyone assumed that the running tool had detached and was free to return to the surface. When it came into view on the camera, though, scientists saw that part of the cork head was still attached, and it wasn't lined up with the hole anymore. They realized that something was very wrong and concluded that the only thing left to do was to bring the damaged equipment back up to the surface and see what had happened. Their fears were confirmed when the cork head reached the surface. Somehow, the casing had been sheared off just below the cork head, leaving all of those instruments behind. That may be why it had holes or something. But what did they hit it with? Maybe the platform or something. Huh? Without the cork head, scientists would be unable to attach to and retrieve the instruments on the seafloor. They might even remain stuck in the hole 
forever. It's clear that we have a major problem. The uh, cork head is still in the um, cork running tool, but it has come a, did, did, uh, unattached or broke off from the uh, borehole. Scientists and engineers met to decide what to do next. Reentry system to Through finish the course. Completion, cork. yes. Correct. Okay. I mean, what do you think, Wayne? That's that's going to save us some time, right? Because yeah, otherwise, yeah, sitting here for twelve hours not doing anything is, is really a waste. We could right. Be tripping in, like say, move, we'd be over there in GP by the time we got down with the drill string. Do the, the jet, jet and test would be done. Come and, back over, and we'd come back over, and I think that's that's going to save you half a day in the long run of productive time. Where we are now, so putting a shallow hole here near the inflow to the system, and then putting a deep hole. Um, instead of at MP1, we have planned at MP2 instead, just because of some geological factors. I think it would be a little less risky. There's no such thing as an easy operation when you're working in the middle of the ocean, almost three miles below the surface. Scientists must be ready to take the good with the bad. They do know that the work they're doing will help us better understand our planet's past, present, and future.